I wanted to start today by telling you a little bit about the first score that ever mattered to me, my SAT score. So for many of you in this room, you've probably never experienced taking this test. But in the US, taking this test is a big part of growing up. College admissions use this test. It's a standardized test to understand and test our aptitude and readiness for college. The score has a significant influence over where you end up going. And it tells us a little bit about you. In my case, the score told me that I was pretty good with words, but better at math. And the good thing is that this score is only a part of the picture. My score was supplemented with other information, semesters worth of grades, a few recommendations, an earnest essay, and extracurriculars. And so when colleges were looking to understand and gauge my potential for college, they were looking at a much bigger picture than just one number. Uh, so fast forward a few years to the next big score in my life, my credit score. I was able to rent a few apartments and able to lease a car based on this score. And I hope that one day I'll be able to buy a home for my family using this score. But unlike my college applications, where my score was supplemented with other information that was interesting on myself, my mortgage will rest almost entirely on this one number, a number that was created for me, a number that is the aggregation and analysis of my public consumer credit data by companies like FICO, Experian, and Equifax. And I didn't have a choice whether or not I wanted it. This score was just created for me. But despite some headaches, my score has actually been very helpful to me, and it's opened up a lot of doors. I've been able to access credit at various amounts and use it however I need to, and when I want to, and where I want to. But what if I didn't have a credit score? What if I was one of the 2.5 billion individuals that currently lack a financial identity? These are individuals that no one is scoring and no one is currently looking at. Individuals that need access and currently can't get it to the wealth of financial products that could be improving their lives. They're individuals just like Brenda, who's a small business owner in Nairobi, Kenya. She sells curtains door to door. Brenda has limited options for investing in and expanding her small business. And even if she could somehow get a lender to actually lend to her, it wouldn't be on her terms or in a way that actually makes sense for how she runs her business. But in addition to small business owners, they're also just regular people like Paul. Paul works at a restaurant, and he needs extra cash in order to be able to travel to visit his family in rural Kenya. Paul could go to an informal money lender in his community, but that would be very expensive and could actually be very risky to his safety. So what are Paul and Brenda supposed to do? Just a few years ago, we actually thought this problem couldn't be solved. And we thought that opening up critical financial services to the base of the pyramid would be too costly and too risky. But at InVenture, we've started to think about this problem differently from a different angle. What if we could build a formal financial identity for individuals by looking at their data? In other words, what if we could actually solve the problem of access by starting with the person rather than the system? And it's true that we don't have traditional financial data on these customers. But what if instead we could build something 
that resembled something more similar to a college application rather than a credit score, something that was generated using their data, their daily lives, and all of the data that that generates, something that's more vivid and accurate. And it turns out that we actually can, and we have. And that is MCOPO Rahisi. It means easy loan in Swahili. MCOPO Rahisi is an Android application that provides instant credit access in less than a minute, delivered directly to a user's mobile money account. The credit can be used immediately, and it can be used however our users want to use it. The application is able to create a credit score for our customers by accessing, with their permission, the vast amount of information that's sitting right in their mobile phones. It authenticates their identity, and it aggregates all of this rich, ordinary life data. Information like their bill payments, their bank account history, their savings balance, their browser history, their location data, social networks, and demographic information. We then take all of these tens of thousands of unstructured, scattered data points, and we combine them, we interact them, and we create structure to build a new version of a credit score. And we do this in under one minute. And we're able, through our data, to understand things about Brenda, things like where her sales come from and what she uses her profit on. We're also able to see that she's actually paying more of her bills on time making her a great customer for us to lend to. In addition to that, we're able to understand where Paul is putting his income from his restaurant. We're able to see that he's starting to research degrees online in hospitality management, and able to see that he's looking up English tutorial applications on his phone, allowing us to customize the kind of credit that we provide to him. The score that we generate allows us to determine the kind of loan amounts and the terms that we provide to each customer. Inventure acts as the lender, and we deliver the loans instantly to a user's mobile money account. We service all of our loans digitally through channels like Facebook, SMS, and WhatsApp, allowing us to completely ensure that the entire lending process works for people on their terms, on their time, and where they already are. In the end, it's a financial identity that looks more like a person rather than a score. And what's really amazing is the fact that we can now build financial experiences that are customized to each individual. It's an entirely new way of thinking of financial products, and it's designed for the new mobile world. There are currently 1 billion Android devices currently in use in emerging markets, and there are 300 million mobile money accounts. In addition to that, there are currently over 26 million mobile money accounts only in Kenya, and over 43% of Kenya's GDP is already transacted through mobile money. Suddenly, individuals that never had access to a traditional bank account now have the ability to transact and save right from the palm of their hands. We now have this vast network of millions of individuals that have increased spending power, individuals that need fast, affordable credit because they already know what they want to do with money and where to spend it. But the problem is that the formal economy has not yet moved to meet these individuals, especially in emerging markets. But that's where we've come in. In just less than a year, we've released this product in Kenya. And we've deployed over 40,000 loans in just less than that year, totaling over 1.5 million US dollars. We have an 85% overall repayment rate, and a 92% of our customers have come back for additional loans and stayed within our system. Our customers 
use our product more like a revolving line of credit, similar to what we would think of as a credit card rather than a traditional loan product. And over 60% of our customers use it for working capital. They're just small business owners, just like Brenda, who's come back and used the product regularly. She comes back about once a month, and she started out by using it for inventory. But she's actually now gone ahead to open up a storefront instead of selling door to door. Paul has also continued to use the product regularly, and he calls the product a lifesaver. He's been able to now consistently go back and visit his family without dipping into his savings or putting up expensive collateral. He can now put that money towards his degree and better manage his, his daily expenses as a result. And as our user base has grown, we've actually been able to improve our data as well. Our credit scoring methodology continues to evolve as our customers continue to live their lives. We can update the score and our loan terms based on their shifting patterns, their behaviors, and spending habits. And we can customize each product to them to make sure that it's meeting their needs and that we can ensure successful repayment. We have literally designed our entire product around the person rather than forcing the person into our system. And this is just the beginning. We've already launched in Kenya, and we've recently launched in Tanzania. And we aim to be in two more countries by the end of this year. But beyond credit, what we've done is to build vivid and more meaningful pictures and financial identities for the newest and most overlooked consumers. Consumers that are incredibly profitable and valuable customers. And what we've done is to give them the power of choice and to put that power right in their hands to build better financial futures. There is so much more that is now possible as a result. The data proves it, and our customers are showing it. It's a winning relationship for our borrowers, for the marketplace, and for InVenture. And it's a score that rather than determining winners and losers, puts us all on an equal playing field. And it's a score that is bigger, richer, and more dynamic than just a single number. Thank you. Extra applause for <laughs> sailing on through the noises. I actually figured that was the credit ratings agencies that had hacked the system at the museum to try and stop you getting your message across. Um, but in fact, we are in an incumbent museum building that's kind of threatened by all these new ideas. And um, they were playing with their fire alarms. So we've solved that one. Um, explain a bit about the business model. How does InVenture make its money? Um, well, we provide loans to our customers. Um, but we do dynamic pricing, so our rates vary anywhere between 5% up to 11%. Um, and then the terms also vary in terms of being anywhere between 21 days to longer terms. Um, and the whole point is that a customer can have only one loan outstanding at a time. So it's very much like a credit card that you actually pay off on a monthly basis. And what sort of regulatory hurdles do you face in the territories you're operating? Uh, well, we ensure that we don't actually you know, share any of the data. So we are completely compliant with privacy rules. Um, and then we do full KYC also in every country. So Kenya is often a case study. We've had M-Pesa before. Um, what is it about Kenya that leads innovators to start there? I mean, I think it's, it's what we're seeing. These numbers are astounding, right? So they've completely leapfrogged over traditional bank accounts or really trying to think about you know, how we can bring these kinds of traditional services to them. And instead, it's that you know, they're using these kind of mobile technologies to actually shift it. Um, so I think the starting point for what we can actually innovate on is completely different. So following your own journey and um, the things that we've previously covered at Wired, um, you know, accounting software through text messaging. Um, 
where do you see, if you're back here in three or four years, what sort of presentation will, be, will you be giving about your newest projects? I would say that I, I think the, the platform that we've now developed um, allows us to now completely better understand these customers. And so we think of it as, you know, we can help people now fully understand what they should do with money, so provide them advice, and that may be in the form of accounting um, or other advisory services. We can provide them credit for what they need, and so we can actually predict that based on the data on their device, um, so creating kind of customized verticals. And then the last thing is that we can actually be there in times of emergency and kind of be those first responders and be that kind of uh, that friend that they need. Um, so that's kind of where we're thinking about it is really holistically thinking about the daily life of the customer. Massive opportunity. Thank you very much for traveling here. Shivana Saroy.